Hey guys, Jackdaw here. Today I'm uncovering the sixth entry in my new law series, paving the road for the anticipated release of the next Dragon Age game. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, through these videos I'll be delving into very particular honed in lore and plot threads that are rather telling for the future narrative of Dragon Age. Last episode, I discussed a truly ever present figure in Fadis who has no if not shoved history for her own villainous misdeeds. Continuing from that, today I am exploring another ancient threat that will certainly destroy Fadus if not dealt with accordingly. The original adversary of the realm and more certainly one of the last. The blight has and will ensue disaster for the Dragon Age. Before we look at the next blights in store for Fadus, we need to explore the many mysteries surrounding the blight and how it's ultimately one of the greatest threats against all living things. I laugh at a world full of stupid humans who ignore the Blight's evil and abandon their vigilance to chase mortal goals. Remember, it is up to you to destroy the Blight. Pray not for someone else to destroy it. It will always nip at your heels. The Chant of Light teaches that the Blight was sent by the Maker as punishment to the seven Tevinta Magisters who conspired and plotted to usurp his heavens. In their pride, the seven Magisters, also known as the Magister Sidereal, physically entered the Fade. After hearing whispers from their ancient old gods who planned to bestow their godhood and knowledge onto each Magister. However, when the Mages breached the Golden City, the old gods were nowhere to be seen. Instead, the Sidereal found the Maker himself upon the throne of heaven. With their trespassing, the city was turned black, committing the second sin. This sin corrupted the Magisters who entered the Fade, returning them to the waking world as the first Darkspawn. However, Tevinter's Imperial Chantry has a different angle on this tale, blaming the lies of the old gods rather than the Magisters who breached the Fade for power and glory beyond and all reckoning. Even further than that, according to Corypheus, one of the actual seven magisters who led the Sidereal scheme to seize the Golden City, when he awoke in the Dragon Age, he claimed that the Golden City was already black and the throne of the gods was empty before they arrived. Advertently disproving the texts of the Chant of Light and the Maker's interference with the creation of the Blight and locking away the old gods. In fact, Corypheus spoke on each of the Magisters discovering and claiming the Black City's darkness for themselves, most certainly referring to the Blight. They spit on our deeds and claim we brought darkness into the world. We discovered the darkness. We claimed it as our own. Let it permeate our being. If the others have not returned, they are lost. I am alone in my glory. While that may be the ravings of an ancient evil twisted creature, Corypheus's testimony is certainly unique and provides more reasoning into the Blight's existence than the Chant of Light has, alluding to the fact that perhaps something actually did happen even before the time of man that resulted in the blackening of the Golden City. Indulging the idea that the Blight is an ancient mystery that predates the Tevinter calendar, the Empty Ones were a short-lived novel Varan cult who worshipped the Blight, believing that it came from a place called the Void, which is a place of nothing also known as the Abyss. The cult believed that returning to the Void was something to be celebrated because it meant an end to all pain and suffering. While the Chantry views the Void as the antithesis of the Maker's creation, the Dalish Elves believe that the Void is the home of the Forgotten Ones, the Gods of Disease, Terror, spite and malevolence. In addition, the Dalish Elves actually have a name for the Blight, being Banalhan, which translates to the place of nothing or rather where the Blight comes from. And Drool, one of the members of the Elven Pantheon, was said to stalk the Forgotten Ones in the Void. She suffered longer and longer periods of madness after returning. She put on armour made of the Void and all forgot her true face. She made weapons of darkness and 
and plague ate her lands. She howled things meant to be forgotten until Mafal turned into a great serpent and sapped Andrul's strength with her magic. Stealing her knowledge of how to find the void, Andrul couldn't get back to the abyss ever since and peace returned. So did Andrul return to her people with the blight, bringing plague upon the lands until Mafal stole Andrul's knowledge away from her, claiming it for herself. Another codex entry points to an angry energy that began to crackle the runes as the elves collapsed caverns, sealing away the deep roads, so no one could awake its anger. These events unfolding after Mafal slew the titans. Was this codex describing the blight attempting to wreak havoc on the ancient elves since the death of the titans, and in defense, the elves sealed away the deep roads to stop its anger? To give even more context, the dark spawn come from the deep rods which have been related to the void in some circumstances. For instance, the anvil of the void was discovered in the deep rods, a powerful tool that was used to turn living dwarves into golems of steel and stone with the use of lyrium. It certainly seems like the void and the deep rods have been very closely represented. Regardless, the blight's origin is still an ancient lingering mystery. As I've explored, it's some kind of darkness with direct ties to the ancient ancient elven times. It's been discovered in the Black City, however it's said to come from the Void, which the dwarves relate to the Deep Roads. Now the Chant of Light, which I've just disproven, described that after the Seven Magisters became the first of the horrifying Darkspawn, they found Dumat, one of their old gods, and in their tainted form, the Magisters corrupted the old god with the Blight, twisting it into an Archdemon, unleashing the first Blight onto Fadis. In essence, the Blight refers to a constant cycle of Darkspawn searching for the sleeping old gods. When found, Darkspawn corrupt and turn an old god into an archdemon, which therefore starts a Blight. Darkspawn are always drawn to the sleeping old gods and search for them via a perpetual song. The old gods have been described as unknown beings that take the shape of dragons worshipped as such by the Tevinter Imperium. However, their true forms are still a mystery. When tainted by Darkspawn, old gods become archdemons, which then lead the hordes of Darkspawn against the people of Fadis via a hive mind connection. After more than a hundred years of the first blight, which destroyed several dwarven kingdoms, the people of Fadis found a way to, at least temporarily, stop a blight. The Grey Wardens were formed as a war effort against the archdemons and waves of Darkspawn, by drinking the blood of the Darkspawn and having the final blow against the Archdemon, the creature would die along with its opponent, therefore stopping the Blight until a new god was awakened. Since that victory, there have been five Blights in total, each occurring throughout the ages. Currently, in the Dragon Age, there's estimated to be two more sleeping old gods, Razakel, the Dragon of Mystery, and Lusakan, the Dragon of Night. However, Trantry rumours conjecture that there may be an unknown eighth old god that was stricken from historical record. To believe that the death of the old gods would definitively stop the blights has been claimed ridiculous. While speaking by omission, Solas shared plenty of his knowledge on the blight, claiming that the fools who first unleashed the blight upon this world thought they were unlocking ultimate power. However, the blight corrupts everything it touches. Those who believe themselves capable of using it safely are are mad. Indirectly, one assumes nothing in any law connects Solas's people to the old god dragons who became archdemons. For all we know, killing the old gods could make things even worse. And finally, Solas himself said, the blight is the real problem. The Grey Wardens have bought us some time, I will grant them that. Take Solas's word as you will, regardless, without the tainted archdemons, the blight is still a corruption that perverts every living thing it touches. As discovered by Bianca Davri, Red Lyrium carries the blight. 
regular lyrium being the blood of the titans red lyrium is a twisted corruption of the same being the growth of red lyrium throughout the land has merely begun attempting to remove the mineral is likely a fruitless effort as it will have already introduced itself into the food chain which begets more corruption blighted soil infects insects which then blights farmer crops in turn blighting the people of Fadis. with the tainted substance multiplying across the ecosystem of the land the blight is an undeniable threat to every living thing in Fadis. with that said the blight has many lingering plot threads for the future that need to be untangled the origin of the blight I've touched on this topic greatly in many of my previous lore videos. However, I'm beginning to finally connect the dots with this one. The Blight is said to come from the place of nothing, being the Void, which is the exact realm the Evanuris hunted the Forgotten Ones and became madder after every visit there. The Dwarves relate the Void to the Deep Rods. The Darkspawn dwell within the Deep Rods as well as the remaining sleeping Old Gods. And the Titans stir beyond the Deep Rods, forming Fadis's foundation. Lyrium is Titan blood and red Lyrium carries the blight. So does the blight come from a blighted Titan deep within the deep roads that the ancient elves tried to seal away and did for a fair time? Did the Evanuris yearn for the power of the blight? Solas did say the fools who first unleashed the blight upon this world thought they were unlocking ultimate power. Without realizing its full potential, did the ancient elves release the blight after Mafal quote killed the Titans? It is said that the elves became obsessed with mining the bodies of titans for lyrium using its power did they begin to mine red lyrium also using its power becoming insane and mentally unstable and in an act of revenge did the not so dead titans lash out against the Evanuris using the blight a corrupted hive mind of a titan that was formed after its death tainting every living thing that was close to it attempting to re-establish the connection with their children the dwarves is this angry energy cracking through the runes and the call of the darkspawn both intrinsically linked because the blight comes from a desperate downed titan that searches for its severed connection does it wreak havoc on Fadus because it yearns for that connection back and will do anything to establish it or does the blight come from something entirely different not fully discovered in the law while this theory may shed light on elements of the blight's origin and purpose it doesn't explain how the blight ended up in the Black City unless we conclude that Arlofan was the Golden City which was then corrupted with the Blight turning it into the Black City. Perhaps the Veil's creation stopped the Blight from entering the Waking World, thus explaining how it was brought back into the realm of the Waking World when the Magisters became tainted after finding the darkness within the Black City. Obviously complete speculation on my part but you can see how the stars are aligning and while I don't think I'm completely right I feel quite close to the truth however I'm sure this mystery will not go unsolved. We must find out the source of the blight and stop it from spreading any further. Current Grey Warden Whereabouts the Grey Wardens have become a burned out, irrational faction as of late, attempting to stop the next blights from happening. However, there are many rumblings of inner conflicts within the Wardens command. Currently, the Grey Wardens of Fortress Weishaupt, the original headquarters where the faction was formed in the Anderfels, have severed communications with the Wardens of the South for reasons unknown. Recently, Griffin Eggs were found in the Anderfels by a new Warden recruit perhaps they've decided to keep this secret among the rest of the wardens to ensure that the birds can survive and endure or are all the wardens of Weishaupt dead the Anderfels are a blighted land with hordes of darkspawn roaming the wastes a sudden silence is rather ominous perhaps the darkspawn finally decided to invade while they've proven to be quite redundant the grey wardens do actually know the locations of the prisons of each of the old gods However, they are deep underground and cannot easily be accessed by the Wardens without cutting through thousands of Darkspawn. But it's worth noting that the Wardens do indeed know the location of Razakil and Lusikant, the next old gods to become blighted. Gilanan's Creations 
The horror of Hallmark in Tivin Tonight's introduced an abandoned tag dedicated to Gilanan, the elven goddess and mother of the Hala. Inside the tag were twisted darkspawn who drank from a pool of thick grey fluid, mutilating themselves with monstrous features like emissaries with bat wings. The hordes of darkspawn also forced their victims to drink from the pool, turning grey wardens into diabolical creatures like centipede hybrids. With almost 11 more of these tags remaining, what other horrors linger within? Will we see even more mutilated darkspawn like brood mothers with harlehorns and dragon wings? Now that would be a sight to bear witness. Mephal's Connection Mephal took Andrew's knowledge of the void, Mephal speaks the calling, and Mephal seeks to collect the remaining old god souls. But for what? I personally believe the old gods each carry a fragment of Mephal, explaining why she encourages the end of the blight, using the dark ritual because she would like to collect the souls for herself, to become whole once again. Whether that's true or not, Mephal has many ties to the blight that require further explanation. Currently, two blights remain, meaning Flemeth has two old god souls still to collect. Will she force the next blight in order to capture the remaining old god souls? Seven Magisters the seven magisters who breach the very heavens are more than just chantry tales you tell your kids at night. They actually exist and have endured throughout the ages. Two of them have revealed themselves to Fadis, the architect and Corypheus. While the architect attempted to stop the future blights by using the blood of Grey Wardens to awaken Darkspawn in a grand scheme to sever the connection to any remaining archdemons, Corypheus unlocked the secrets of effective mortality and used blight magic. He murdered the divine with blood magic and sought a scheme to reclaim the throne of the gods for himself. Fortunately, his pride was defeated and he was sent to the Fade for his crimes. Corypheus is essentially immortal because of the blight. He has the ability to body jump from one blighted creature to the other, therefore he will live on, wherever the heck he is, unless the source of the blight is eradicated for good, assuming there is a source and it can be stopped. But if two of the Magisters survived, surely the other five will have endured somewhere in Fadis, and if they share any of the powers of the previous two, they could be very formidable foes. The Old God's True Identity while the old gods take the shape of dragons, they are certainly not draconic beasts, especially considering actual dragons are highly resistant to the blight. Instead, the old gods can seemingly shapeshift into whatever they desire. To Spitball, the blight is viewed as sin, a punishment for entering the Maker's realm. In ancient elven times, certain forms like dragons were reserved for the gods and their chosen. However, the elven god Durfaman had a sinner who took the form of the old gods and was sentenced with high treason. The correlation of sin is very interesting, but even more than that, the fact that Durfman Sinner took the shape of the elven gods and the old gods take whatever shape they want, could the two relate? Regardless, the old god's true form is still a mystery. Will we ever see an old god before it's too late, uncovering their actual non-blighted shape? Does their true form even matter? Is it something already recognisable in the law? And finally, the next blights. Why blights happen is debated. The prevailing belief is that the archdemons are trying to regain power after their home in the Fade was corrupted by the Seven Magisters. However, with so much of the blight connecting to the time before man, the time before the Seven Magisters, I feel it's rather shallow to believe that the blight happens just because of Lat. Do archdemons follow the call of a vengeful titan, or was the blight created in the void, unleashed by power-hungry fools? What what is the purpose of the Blight and how can one stop it from happening? The Blight is the true enemy of Dragon Age. Even Solas himself said that we should not undermine its growth. It will surely have a catastrophic effect in the next Dragon Age. For all we know, Solas himself may have a plan to stop the Blight as he realises its true evil. In any event, two old gods remain untainted, yet to be turned into archdemons. Let me know your thoughts down below on the future blights and everything in between. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, like me on Facebook, but until the next one, I have been Jackdaw and I should go. Whoa, whoa, whoa.